All right, here's a quick rundown of how you can abstract away all of the custom data within an animation blueprint. Uh, so normally, here, let me pull it up. This is a this is just a regular uh, UE4 project uh, that I just created for the test purposes. So normally within um, the animation blueprint, it has a lot of static references to data assets. So like here we have the ALS and walk run uh, blend space. And if you create a new anim blueprint with a different character with has, which has uh, different blend spaces, different animations, you need to go through all of the different sections of this animation blueprint and update each individual reference, which is a huge time sink because you could like accidentally mix up one of the links or forget to change it and it might throw things off in a really subtle way. And so what I tried to do is I tried to make it so uh, you the only thing that dictates the data going into the animation blueprint is the character itself and so how do we do that so first let's uh, let's just use the ALS character blueprint um, and let's oh first of all let's create a struct all right we're gonna create a struct called char anim data and within this struct we are going to have a reference to a blend space and it's object reference, obviously. So we're going to call this ALS in walk run f. All right. And then the default values, we can just set it uh, to walk run to this, but it doesn't really matter because we'll be setting it in the uh, character blueprint as well. All right. So now that we have our struct, uh, for, for this instance of the tutorial, we'll just create a struct, but if you get it down into C++, uh, you can actually create a data asset, and then a data asset is, uh, you can end up creating a data asset that contains a bunch of different structs, and so it's just an easier way to organize everything. Um, there are other, other reasons, but I'm not going to go into why you would use a data asset, but I'm not going to go into that. But for now, uh, we'll just use a, a regular struct. So now that we're in our character blueprint, let's create a variable for that char anim data struct. Oop. Char anim data. And let's call that my chars anims. All right. Uh, let's make it public. And let's assign the outside so as a default variable. Um, yeah, so what we can do here is Let's go to my char anims. It's so class defaults, my char anims. So this is just by default. We can change it to uh, none, but we'll just we'll just keep the default. We'll keep the default value just because that's the one we're going to plug back in. <clears throat> Anywho, so if you had a new character and you had a different blend space, uh, you would just plug that in here instead of the obviously the default ALS uh, animation. So now that we have a struct and our character that has that struct with his animation, let's first break the animation to make sure that, to show you uh, when we plug it back in that it actually works. So let's first break it. So we, we're in the locomotion cycle state. Uh, let's remove this link and then it should make a really funny walking cycle or rather lack thereof. Yeah, because right now it's looking for the blend space but there's no blend space to reference. So it just de defaults to a T-pose and he's just walking around, you know, crazy. Uh, so what we can do here is first we grab when when the blueprint is initialized right here. Um, I put this code in beforehand. We we grab the data from the character. This data, the mychar anims, and then we will assign it to a variable here called uh, anim data, and then we'll call it. We'll create this. We can either do we can either have the entire struct here, jar anim data, or if you'd rather have just individual pieces, it takes a little more time, um, but it, it saves you time from having to break the struct every single time you reference a an object within it. But for our purposes, we'll do we'll do uh, anim data struct, and then we're just going to assign it from the character. So we're going to go to set anim data struct. My my char anims, and then we're going to assign the characters uh, struct to here. Compile it. Cool, cool. All right, so 
What does that mean? The anim data struct within this blueprint now contains data. Uh, so remember, that just has this one, but it could contain 10, 100, doesn't really matter what. It could contain poses, it could contain curve names, it can contain anything really. And so it just depends on how much you want to abstract the data from the anim blueprint. So now that we have the data assigned from our character, let's plug it in. So you would go click on this ALS and walk around F and you instead of having bind this blend space bind click here click expose as pin so that gives you a pin to plug in the blend space so let's get this let's break this and then let's plug in this ALS and walk run F all right and then let's drag this all the way down here and compile save and let's see if he runs correctly hey he does look at that so what this does is uh, again I, I cannot stress enough how much time this could save uh, it, it takes a lot of work up front but if you have say 20 different characters 20 different characters and they each have dynamic animations that are very different from each other uh, this would allow you to just plug and play just create a new a new struct in their in their blueprint go to their defaults, class defaults, and then you just fill in all of these different blend spaces, all of these different animations, all these different poses, and then you would you would never uh, you would never have to have separate blueprints unless you had custom date custom logic within here. You could just have one animation blueprint for every to rule them all. Uh, and you would just plug in data and then it would go from there. Uh, and so this would really cut down a lot on uh, refactoring you'd have to do. So if you change if you change logic in one of the animation blueprints uh, and you want to make that change everywhere, you wouldn't have to change like 10 different animation blueprints, you just change one. Um, so I think personally, I think this could save a lot of time, but you know, it, 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 it's up to you if you want to put in the legwork up front because it does take quite a bit of work to go through every single little piece of data, expose the pin, plug it in, all that. But it has helped me personally, so hopefully it'll help you. Um, yeah, if anyone wants the C++ implementation, uh, I can show you that. It's basically just creating date assets and structs and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that sh that's the gist of it. And uh, yeah, I hope you hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the Discord. See you.